So we're in the midst of an epidemic of diabetes, which is likely to get worse. And one of the consequences of diabetes is heart failure. And so a lot of work has been done on trying to predict patients at risk of developing heart failure. And the thing which is really novel now is that we have some new drugs that have been shown to prevent heart failure. The big question is, who should we give them to? And so in this session, we discussed how to identify patients at risk, because when you're making a judgment of treating some people and not treating everybody, risk is obviously pivotal. And then what are the markers you could use from the echo that would guide you about that risk? Uh, and then how you might make an intervention. So who are the people that should be studied? Heart failure is a disease of older people. And we use some clinical screening tools about the six minute walk and also about a questionnaire, a heart failure questionnaire. And we use them to select the patients to have an echo. The echo test, there are three components to it that are really important. The presence of left ventricular hypertrophy, the diastolic evaluation, and global longitudinal strain. And the more of those things that you have abnormal, the more likely the patient is to develop heart failure. So you can see that we can take people who have diabetes, identify the ones at slightly increased risk, who justify an echo, and then do an echo to understand their risk. So then we end up with a group of people who are particularly at risk. And the question is, how should we treat them? And at the moment, we don't have the answers to that. We know that there are really three categories of treatment. There are metabolic treatments, such as the SGLT2 inhibitors, they're diabetic drugs. There are treatments that are des designed to reduce fibrosis, such as the ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers or mineralocorticoid antagonists. And then there are things that we might do to the vasculature, for example, using statins. And we don't at the moment understand which of those is optimal, but what we do understand is that in that big group of people with diabetes at risk of heart failure, there are subgroups and we believe that those particular subgroups may be optimally treated with one of those treatments rather than the other. And that's where we are now. So finally, the question is, how do we incorporate this in our practice at the moment? I believe that this is an encouraging and developing area. I don't think it's ready for screening in large numbers of diabetic patients at the moment. I think we need to understand better who is going to benefit from treatment but I think we have the rest of the question sorted out about understanding risk. I think that has been established. Thank you.